All right, there is a reason why I'm wearing my Harry Potter shirt today, and it's a very special one because I'm super excited to talk about it. All right, so many of you may know that on my main channel, I talk about movies, music, books, theater, all of that. Um, and this cannot wait for the miscellaneous uh, week of the month. So <laughs> in case you don't follow my Twitter or you haven't been for the follow for the last week, um, I am a huge gymnastics fan. Uh, it's always been my favorite sport to follow for the Olympics. I never really followed it outside of the Olympics until this year. I follow, I've been following USA Gymnastics on Twitter. Um, I watched nationals and, uh, was a little bit miffed about the team selection, um, process. But anyways, so this past weekend was Gymnastics World Championships in Montreal, Canada. So it was great. Same time zone. Uh, and it's a year after an Olympic year, so there means there are no team competition. It's all individual, so the individual all around and the apparatus finals. And this is an interesting year for Team USA because none of the returning, or sorry, none of the uh, f the final five uh, returned for this year. Um, some of them, I believe, are aiming to return to competition in time to go to Tokyo in 2020. Um, I think Simone is back in the gym. Allie, I've heard, uh, wants to go to Tokyo. Madison Koshin's doing college gymnastics. And I'm not quite sure what Lori Hernandez and Gabby Douglas are doing. But that aside. So this year's a very growing year for Team USA. Um, so this year for Worlds, we sent our national champion, Reagan Smith, who I have mixed feelings about. She's a great gymnast, deserved the national title, was so clearly the best there. But for so I don't know, something about her attitude just... Uh, I don't know. Um... <laughs> We sent uh, our National Vault champion, Jade Carey. Um, great choice, obviously. Uh, we sent um, our bars specialist, Ashton Locklear, uh, the only member of this current team that has previous Worlds experience. I believe she went in 2014 um, and also an Olympic alternate, as was Reagan Smith. And then we have Morgan Hurd, who finished sixth at Nationals. And people were like, oh, why didn't you send Jordan Childs and blah, blah, blah. But I think Morgan Hurd had the more international experience, and I think that helped her when it came to Worlds. Now, this is a very interesting Worlds because <laughs> there were so many injuries and the apparatus were broken. The floor, literally, the floor broke, and a lot of the men had to redo their routines. And as such, there were, uh, I think, nine floor finalists for men because the results differed after the change. But anyways, so uh, Team USA sent four women. We sent six men um, for each of the apparatus, presumably. Uh, national champion Yul Muldaur, uh for the men went. I think, I don't know if he was the only all-arounder. I think he might have been. I looked at the sheet. No other US men uh, wanted to do the all-around, so there was that. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, um, so yeah, so <laughs> no cats, we have to do this. So let's just get to the world championships. Um, qualifications. This is the difference between the U.S. women's and the men's team. The women uh, qualified for at least one person per event. In some events, we qualified two. Um, but as I said before, Reagan Smith <laughs> um, was one of the many favorites favorites that were injured uh, in this world. She was injured right before the all-around final, um, so she qualified second. I think she qualified to floor. She couldn't do either of them because she hurt her ankle. Larissa Lordak from Armenia, also an all-around favorite, um, I think injured herself during qualifiers. And same with King Kohei, King Kohei Uchimura, six-time world and Olympic champion, um, injured during qualifying. And Vanessa Ferrari was injured in the floor final. I believe she was the 2006 world champion. So many injuries, and a lot of lower than normal scores. There were a lot of falls, more than I'm used to seeing. Um, it might be that because it's a younger, a lot of younger teams, it's the year after an Olympic year, a lot of major Olympians take time off, but we did have a lot of major returning Olympians. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is, if it was the apparatus, it was if it was the lighting. I saw some people complaining about how the lighting and how the audience wasn't lit, and that might have... Um, uh, contributed to some to some lower scores, but also it was, a, again, as with Team USA, it was a younger team. I wasn't used to seeing um, so many 14s and 13s, or I guess the rarity of some 14s, a very, very rarity of some 15s, but there were some 15s, well-deserved. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about finals. Yul Muldaur, first world championships ever, placed seventh in the all-around, very respectable result, um, not what we want, might have wanted. And the U.S. men's team... Uh, only qualify three people to event finals. Uh, Moldauer and Wittenberg were both qualified to the floor final. Mol Wittenberg finished sixth. And, uh, Nador finished 
just off the podium in the Pommel Horse final, and I could tell that he probably wasn't going to finish as high because it didn't look like he had a very as difficult of a routine as the defending Olympic champion Max Whitlock, who defended his world title this year, and I think he won the title on Pommel Horse in 2015 too. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But three-time Pommel Horse champion Max, Max Whitlock, um, so well deserved, so complicated, so effortless, and thank you for coming back to Worlds just to do this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there wasn't a lot, to, there wasn't a lot really notable in men's finals for Team USA. Um, congratulations to Zhao Ruteng, who's the men's all-around champion, the first, uh, <laughs> new world champion since 2009. Uh, Lin Xiaopan, also of China, taking silver, and Kenzo Shirai taking bronze, and he also won on floor and on vault so great for you so i know it is nice to see like i know like a lot of the big men gymnasts are really buff like donald wittenberg and sam mccullick and alex Hedora, but it's nice to see like smaller men's gymnasts as well like yomo dow or kenzo shirai and um i believe the israeli uh, guy that won um uh artem dogov i i'm so sorry if i butchered her name but like the three top finishers on floor all very like they're not skinny, they're still very muscular, but like not quite as big. It's I, I like seeing men gymnasts like that because it shows that you don't have to be like super, super broad. Um, as I said, Pommel, Max Whitlock, David Blyaski of Russia got silver, and I think he got a bronze in another event. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, other notable things, uh, Kenzo Shirai, of course, one vault. Um, uh, horizontal bar. Um, Epizano in, the best save um i think in gymnastics history also shout out to uh zondoland and barlu who finished silver and bronze on pommel on uh pommel bars horizontal bar thank you for representing my dutch many culture thank you um and of course i have to mention o mention oleg Verna, who finished off the podium in so many event finals and finally got a silver on parallel bars please don't feel bad you got your world medal thank you thank you thank you and now we move on to the women's event which is all i care about because they're awesome as I said, so the all-around, um, as I said, Reagan Smith qualified second by a thousandth of a point, got injured, and so we had only one American there, and that was Morgan Hurd. Now, she had qualified sixth, and it was a very interesting all-around final because it wasn't like we had Simone Biles and we knew she was going to win. It was a very um, contested all-around final. I think the girl from Belgium, Nina Darwall, was leading after the first rotation, but she had just gone on her best event, which was bars, and she did get a bronze in that, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And then after the second rotation, um, Morgan Hurd and Ellie Black were tied. They were tied for first, and so you didn't really know what was going to happen. And then they went to beam in the third rotation, and Ellie Black was leading by, I believe, a tenth of a point. Morgan Hurd was a little bit wobbly on beam. Um, she did great on bars, great on vault, and it was really going to come down to floor. Now, Morgan Hurd went first on floor, which meant that five other girls had to go before we uh, figured out who was going to win. And surprise, surprise, Harry Potter nerd and wonderful all-around gymnast Morgan Hurd is our new world champion. This is the seventh win in a row for Team USA. Um, World or Olympians, so you have Simone Biles, four-time, Gabby Douglas, Jordan Weaver, um, and now Morgan Hurd, we can add her to that title, and she's so wonderful, she's just 16, she competes with glasses, she has braces, she's an inspiration to all of us, and she's such a big nerd, JK Rowling sent her a tweet, I love her reaction, um, she's just so graceful and so funny, and, um, I follow her on Twitter now, and I follow her on Tumblr, I will link those both below, maybe, I don't know, but she's amazing, and I love her so much. Um, and shout out to Allie Black, who got Canada's highest ever placement in the individual all-around women's finals and their first all-around world championship or Olympic medal. So go, Ellie. You did great. I'm so sorry that you fell on beam and beam finals, but you know what? You got your all-around medal. You're still an amazing gymnast, and I, comp and I applaud you for sticking through it for so long. You were a uh, London and Rio Olympic team member, and you are an inspiration to all Canadian gymnasts and gymnasts everywhere. So good for you. I have my laptop on. I have the results in front of me. Um, so now we move on to individual event finals. Um, vault, we had Maria, Mas Maria Paseca, Olympic silver medalist and 2015 world champion, defending her world title. She was great on it. Um, Jade Carey of America came in second. First, again, first world championships ever. Um, she, great, such grace, such poise. And then, of course, I have to shout out Julia Steingruber, who defended her Olympic bronze medal. And Oksana Chuzavatina is 42 years old and finished Fifth, I think, in vault finals. She keeps making vault finals. For her to keep doing this at her age, and she went, she's been to seven Olympics, she's been to so many world championships, she is an inspiration to all bow down bitches. 
I'm not going to bleep that. Um, then we got to bars. Bars is a little bit disappointing in USA. It's the only individual event final that we didn't get any medals on. I feel so sorry for Ashton Locklear because she did get injured earlier in the season and she didn't have time to put together as difficult a routine, which meant that she had to really nail her execution score in order to be in the hunt. And she fell and I could see she was crying and I felt so bad because she really, she really is the best bars worker. Um, competing in the U.S. right now, and I feel so bad, and I hope she gets better, and I hope she comes back to Worlds next year, and just does amazing, and I hope that she keeps going. Um, but Fan Yi Lin, well-deserved win, uh, followed by Elena Aramaya, who was also our World uh, Bronze Medalist of Russia, good for you, and we got, as I said before, Nina Darwell of Belgium finished third. Um, let me get to Beam. Uh, Paulina Schaefer, good job, finished first. Morgan Hurd, again, much stronger beam routine, I felt. I will have to check if I, if she got a higher score on the beam here than in the all-around. But she did great, and she added a silver medal to her goal, so good job for you. And Tabia Alt, also a returning Olympian. Um, absolutely fantastic. The Germans did well. Uh, again, so, so, so sorry, Ellie Black, that you fell. And Maya Murakami, who finished, again, fourth. She finished fourth in the all-around, and, oh, man. Um... So then we move on to floor. Speaking of my Murakami, my Murakami just barely missed out on the podium twice so far. Finally gets her world gold, and I believe it is the second world gold championships medal for a Japanese woman. We all know that the men's Japanese team is very good, but for another Jap the uh, second world all around gold for a Japanese woman. So good job, you, and you were so so cute in your intro video of making it rain. I love you so much. I hope you keep competing. You have a wonderful personality and wonderful, beautiful floor routines. Again, Jade Carey also got another silver medal, so she, her and Morgan also came away with two medals each, which I think is great. Um, and then Claudia Fragapani of, the, of Great Britain, another great British gymnast, <laughs> uh, came third. Um, I was a little bit surprised not to see uh, Olympic bronze medalist uh, in floor, Amy Tinker not get this one, but she did do well in the all around. So there's that. And Vanessa Ferrari. Oh my gosh. I'm so. I was watching it live. It was scary to watch live because she did. She fell and then she didn't get up. I kind of. I did have it on mute because I was talking. I did. Ha I did have it on mute because I was talking to someone else while I was watching. But to watch it and I was just like, oh man. I felt so terrible. And to see her get wheeled out in the wheelchair was. Oh man. Um. So overall, a very interesting Worlds. Um, I'm looking forward to Worlds next year. I am looking forward to seeing the U.S. Uh, national team uh, flourish. Again, it is a very young team. I think for a very young team, they did very, they did very well at their very first Worlds. I believe um, the ages, I think, are 16, 16... I think her 16, 17, 17, and Ashton, I believe, is 19, so she's the oldest. Um, but I think it's a wonderful team. I think they've got some great um, other up-and-coming gymnasts coming up. Um, so Jordan Childs, Trinity Thomas, uh, Riley McCusker, I hope she gets better. I felt bad that she had to pull out of World Selection Camp, especially because she won the Bars title um, at the at the U.S. Championships. But uh, yeah, um, I love watching gymnastics. I hope some of the final five make their way back to competition. Um, and I'm so glad to see uh, the development of gymnastics around the world. I think there were great showings for nations that I wouldn't necessarily think of of gymnastic nations, but um, um, especially for Canada, I cannot applaud you enough. You had a great showing, a great team. Um, I know there were a couple falls, but um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble about gymnastics. Um, Michael Buckley, if you're watching, we need to be BFFs and watch uh, gymnastics together. Um, <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm not totally kidding. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, you can subscribe to my main channel where I promise I am much, much more put together. Um, well, yeah, I guess this is uh, professionalism takes a backseat on this channel. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Tumblr to hear all my musings about gymnastics. And, uh, yeah, thank you so very much for watching, and I love y'all, and I'll see you soon. Bye.